All right, so today we're going to talk about my 2021 Honda Bridgeline Sport Canada, Canada Edition with all the extra goodies like sunroof and sliding rear glass that our friends in the U.S. don't get. Uh, first up is going to be the wheel and tire upgrade here. So um, I can't remember the name brand, but I've got a, an 18-inch wheel here with a 30 offset and the Cooper ATS uh, four, AT3 4S in 265-6018. That is about the largest size you could put on here without too much rubbing. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there has been some rubbing. Uh, if you look right in here, and hopefully that'll just wear away and it'll stop making all that noise. Anyway, the tires are fantastic. Gonna take them out in the uh, in the mud tomorrow. Uh, next up, since we're standing right here, we've got uh, Caput's uh, pod lights or ditch lights, if you want to call them that. Uh, Caput's uh, Canada-wide truck accessory store. Uh, these are the uh, 1,700 lumens each. And then the holders are the Nolo Designs ditch light holders. I'll show you a little something on the inside here. All of this is being run through the aux beam system, which will allow me to run eight different sets of lights through one switch panel. Uh, we won't talk about the stereo stuff. That's what all the extra fuse holders are for. We will save that for another day. Everything else under here is pretty much OE. I haven't even done anything to the uh, air filter yet. A uh, quick look on the inside just to show you what the aux beam control panel looks like. So this is wired to the ignition, unfortunately. I'd like to find a workaround, but if I wire it direct to the battery, then that panel is going to stay lit up green all the time. And then I will have to wire a switch to turn the panel on and off. It gets a little bit, uh, little bit clunky, so we don't want to do that. And next up here, we've got the scan gauge 2 controller, which I've got primarily in there for monitoring my transmission temperatures. All right, now let's look at my Overland build because uh, starting to get bit by the Overland bug here. As much as the weatherman doesn't agree and the uh, schedule doesn't, we are going to get out tomorrow for some adventuring. So uh, full-size spare uh, OE rim, uh, Michelin X-Ice, also 265-6018. Uh, I just didn't feel the need to buy a fifth uh, fifth tire in the uh, in the aftermarket stuff. So that makes do. Uh, my latest addition up here is the Doghouse 8x8 awning. It's uh, just simple two legs, not freestanding, not Batwing 270. They were all out of that good stuff. So that's what we've got going on up there. Um, the rack, uh, the Vantec P3000, very popular amongst Honda owners. And then the cargo basket up here is the Yakima Load Warrior. The reason I bought this one is because it's got quick disconnects. So you can actually, if it wants to cooperate, pull this back, flip this open, release this, do that four times, lift and remove. And you've got this thing out in under a minute getting it back in takes probably two minutes because you got to line it up um, just generic amazon max track boards um, strapped down with the quick strapping silicone on one end bungees on the other um, just a ten dollar shovel from princess auto for my american friends those guys are uh, similar to harbor freight and then on this end we've got the high lift jack uh, mounted with the high lift uh, brackets which you can see in here and then just a uh, quick fist for the shovel and then the uh, t-track mounting for the awning i'm not going to deploy the awning because that'll take a few minutes and i haven't even done that yet uh for those of you that took a little peek over there i will take a quick second to tell you about the uh quad and trailer this was something i had set up in the winter time to use for plowing snow uh, commercially Turned out to be reasonably lucrative, even in the Pacific Northwest. So under there is a Polaris um, 570 Sportsman Quad. And then up top is my doghouse uh, Mesa four-person tent. So this thing opens up pretty nice to, uh, I think, a sleeping area of 72 by 96 or uh, yeah, 6 by 8 feet. Uh, pretty sturdy. Yeah, the frame was custom made by yours truly so that I could still get my quad underneath. And then the racking system was designed, although not perfectly, but with the idea that I could get kayaks up top. I didn't quite make it high enough. Turns out the tent is taller than what the instruction manual said it would be. Anyway, that is just a quick look at the exterior. Uh, more mods planned. As uh, money comes up, we'll see what uh, what else I get bit by. Um, oh yeah, of course, I've got um, no low design skid plates all the way through. Uh, we've got uh, the gas tank skid plate you can see there. Actually, that's the rear diff skid plate. You have to take my word for it on the gas tank skid plate. Further back, um, just a generic Amazon shackle that I don't keep on there unless I am planning on going off-roading. And here, quick damage. I did try doing some uh, quad trails and got a little bit janky in there, caught my tailpipes, and then instead of going forward, I backed up. 
caused a little bit of squishing. No big deal. And then if you go to the front, give you a quick look under here at the Nolo Design uh, oil pan skid plate, and that'll just protect you from any kind of damage. So anyway, if you guys like this video, let me know. Uh, it's, it's a one-off, one take. I haven't really done anything like this before, but uh, who knows? Maybe I'll become some famous YouTuber someday. Probably not. Anyway, tell me what you think. Over and out.